another episode with Plenty with Suro. Today we have two ladies who are not only beautiful from outside but beautiful from inside too. They are very close to my heart because they share the same passion as I am. So let me introduce to those two elegant, beautiful ladies. One is known as a brand of technology, digital, and one is known to a brand of women leadership. So firstly, the CEO and the managing director of Hemas Pharmaceutical and Hemas Logistic, Kasturi Chalaraja Wilson. Hi, Hi Kasturi. Then the secondly, the elegant, the beautiful lady of digital industry. The chief officer of Dialog, and she's Sandra de Sousa. Hi, Hi Sandra. Hi. And it's nice to have you all both in the couch together, I would say. And being two friends for a long time. Is it school time friends? From school age you'll be friends, right? So now both of you all are not anymore in the school, <laughs> right? But I have seen you all in forums and conferences, but I have not seen you all together speaking on the same topic. Not exactly. Yeah, we've been. Yeah. We shared a magazine cover of this uh, most powerful 50. Ah, and yes. Funnily, weirdly, nobody knew we were good friends, but we were featured on the same page. Okay. Uh, that's true, I remember. So, how do you feel like, you know, now, Kasuri, you are a CEO and you are heading one of the I would say largest digital companies and uh, how I say a marketing section but still being friends people say when they grow old and when they become successful ladies doesn't have friends but you are still our friends how come? Yes, you want to go first? <laughs> yeah, if I let her go first, she'll take the full half an hour. That is true, you. that is true. <laughs> so we, I think it's just that we are not friends. We are friends because we love each other for who we are. Um, on career, I respect her a whole lot because I think she's so efficient as a person. Uh, more than that, I think uh, she's the amazing human being. Uh, she's there for everybody whenever they need. Uh, she helps loads of people. I know how much she helps her underprivileged, which is very close to my heart. But then she has always been there for me, unconditionally. So I think what I, I mean, true friends will only want the best for each other. So that's all I say. I just respect her on her work and I love her for the person she is. Well, Kasu has just stolen my lines because I could have pretty much said the crux of it would have been the same thing. Uh, there's so much I you know, uh, uh, admire Kasturi and, and I think she knows that I'm one of her biggest fans. Um, and I don't think friends need to compete with each other ever. Um, say for instance, if we were in the same business, line of business, in business we will have no choice but to compete, but that's our work life, right? In our private lives, in our personal lives, she is who she is, I am who I am. And we love each other, we've known each other since I think we were kids, like six, seven, whatever, right? Um, uh, and then long before I could have ever heard my cast story, uh, when I was like probably six, seven years old, I met her mom. And at six, seven years of age, I used to look at her mom and think one yeah, day. Yeah, I remember I, you made a yes. comment on her Facebook when she put her yeah. mother's picture, yeah. right? Yeah, because I, I looked at her, because my uncle used to work in the office. Okay. Uh, and as it would have been the case with all the you know males that ever met her mom, she was so beautiful, so elegant. I know my uncle had a crush on, <laughs> crush on her, and so did everybody else. And he used to take me to office sometimes, right? So I used to go and watch this beautiful lady boss and think one day I want to be a lady big boss in my sari like that, and you know all of that, right? Uh, but I had forgotten all about it until you know. I told Kasturi one day, oh my gosh, you know, you actually the only person who's probably topped. That is probably her, because I think she's the one person that wears the sari most elegantly, hands down, for sure in Sri Lanka. Amongst everything else, of course. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm just so happy for her, just like I know she's happy for me. We cheer each other on, and just not the two of us. I think all our friends are like that, right? We are able to look past little faults, little whatevers of each other, uh, admire the strengths, cheer each other on when needed. 
and that's the whole thing about friendship because I think all of us are very unique in itself. Right? And I guess uh, just being there, we you know each other, you have to be there for each other. But on work, I must think one thing while she was talking, I was thinking, even though we do two different lines, yeah. where sometimes she's a cus I'm a customer to their company. But weirdly, people would say, Kasri, why don't you call Sandra? She's my friend, your friend. But I said, no, friendship is separate. These go through a normal person. I don't think we have, I have the endless complaints, I know you're my friend and I have to pay so much for it. <laughs> and all that, but you know, weirdly, we have respected our friendship line and we have never crossed it in a corporate line, yes, ever, right. whereas we did so that's much together. So that's yeah. something actually a lot of women should well learn, that just because you're a friend and holding a position, yeah. you cannot make demands and can, you cannot yeah. look for favorations, right? Yeah. So I think that's something for us to also learn, because I have gone through, and knowing people and some people say when you don't help, you are being criticized. And I think one thing I want to do, I want this, because I'm sharing the couch, I wanted to actually appreciate it. When I graduated from Harvard, my kids were supposed to come to this yeah. situation. And I had to go sometime back here, kids were coming. And about three weeks before I flew for the final semester, and she called and said, um, so when are the boys joining you? And I said, no, they're not coming, unfortunately, they don't get the visa. And she said, okay, and next thing I knew, she had landed in Harvard for my graduation. And I mean, doing that for a friend comes fly 20 hours away just to make sure that I had some wingman in my corner. Yeah. I think mean, you don't get that. It's a unique person who do that. Well, Papa feel with roses, balloons, yeah, I didn't know all the pictures. You know, that was the embarrassing part. Yeah, but yeah. So I think she was embarrassed that I had like a balloon flying for her. But they I think that's, that's a uniqueness <laughs> yeah. of life. But everybody else in the room were quite thrilled. No, yeah. they, they were like a friend coming. Yeah, right? yeah, you know, the when you feel it. like, and you know something in life, even though you have, we have a job, uh, and we dis, we do our careers very, we really take pride in it. I think end of the day we're human beings, and if we can be decent human beings and appreciate each other and have these kinds of lovely friendships and relationships, it's amazing. Then you feel your good. So in school age, who got more boyfriends, you or you? Can I just say singularly only one person would have had that and I'm looking at And I'm just going to say, since I was in boarding school until I left school, it couldn't have been me. <laughs> <laughs> but Let's like, just leave it at that. None of us wouldn't have gone, but definitely it's not me. Okay. Okay, so that would probably be because Kasri was so busy with her little sports thing, morning, noon, and night, yeah. and she was just, a, you know, one of those girls. No, in sports who also, there was a lot of boys who were interested, but she was not being a very. No, I don't think she was bothered either. Actually, I was such a. I look like one of the boys. I don't think. The yeah, I, 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 don't think they would have, you know, that that stage. Yeah, yeah she, she's, you know, that that was her in school. She was just a. One of those sporty tomboy <laughs> shoes, something, t-shirt, and then of course, you know, well, playing games all the time and sport all the time. I think she was just getting darker and darker and darker. She, she was like a little bit. Yeah. And I didn't even know, actually I was one of the tomboy, so I wouldn't have known. Now who are who, uh, getting the more attention from you? Well, she'll have to get the more attention, clearly, clearly. <laughs> uh, she's single, she's... You know, she's everything that uh, you know anyone should yeah, think I think of. she'll be because for sure. she's, for, for Sri sure. Lanka, I think she's one of our icons, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So coming back to from your personal life to a bit of a you know who you are from the apart from personal life. Kasturi, if I come back to you, you know, a few years ago you were not a brand, but you are now a big brand, right? And it's not just a brand, you know. Mostly in Sri Lankan companies, they employ brands to build brands. But now, you are a brand where they actually, with or without your knowledge, even your company is getting that, uh, I would say, getting plus, my, uh, plus marks, right? But how do you feel, you know, you're coming from an environment, there was no, you didn't know anything about brand, but now you are a brand. And where the women leadership is, everyone is focusing on you. And where gender equality, they look at you. Right, so how like a, a especially a lady bringing a brand to a company, not just getting the brand of the company to you, you are bringing a brand to the company. How do you feel like that? Actually, it's very humbling. I didn't realize this aspect of it till I think the may, maybe the last one and a half years people have been telling this and I'm saying, really, I'm not a brand? I mean, I'm who I am. 
so i think what marketing talks about is the same thing uh, I, i thought about it a bit now because people ask this and i don't know what to answer it's who i am that's a genuineness you bring uh, i have not changed as i'm an op- the authenticity hasn't changed however much i i've grown in my career and that's my personality so um I'll be honest, down to earth, but my leadership style also has become an internal brand within the organization. That is also about performance. Is also about being fair, having a kind side, and driving uh, tough uh, performance, which I think I share with Sandra when I see her. Uh, we have an external brand where people around think she's a rival to work for. People inside would protect us till they die because they love. They they would they we get the best out of them and they grow. Uh, but i think yes it has happened purely because it's uh, two folds it's i have been loved within my organization to be myself and grow and uh, very few people get that opportunity i think few of us have got it and he has got it and uh, i've been who i am so for me it's no brain i go out and still the person i am and i would uh, uh, be a kid i'll be played a fool but yet i have a corporate side to me and that's the brand they talk about uh including being straight and being outspoken and also having the leadership side they're not the company side i guess it's a positive in, uh, brand for himas purely because they give the environment to let uh somebody grow secondly they allow the female to they believe that the roles were not gender based mm-hmm. and whether it was a female who was supposed to put in be put into that industry which was supposedly male dominant they believe that uh, could do it so that is a positive image for them to make the environment conducive to allow person to okay i remember i called you 4 years ago saying that you won an award <laughs> and it took me 45 minutes to convince why you deserve the award because you were telling me so much i'm not from a marketing background i'm from a customer service and also i'm not thing to do with digital but now <laughs> where digital is there the only lady who sitting is you sandra so how it has changed because you have made a brand in digital yeah. industry so okay let me put it this way i think for uh, the digital piece uh, it's like a lot of other pieces uh, of work uh, sometimes i kind of refuse to want to be doing something because i'm so much passionate about the customer side of things uh but sometimes you know how it is when you, you have a boss and you don't have a choice right so um dr hans was my uh boss then about 2 years ago when we were heading into a mainstream digital transformation program uh decided that uh, we needed to anchor the whole program on something and he he figured that the best thing to anchor it on was the customer someone who has the customer at heart and knows the customer someone who can also you know gather momentum around the program handle situation solving problems uh you know working with the staff because there's like 3000 staff uh and all of that you know so he he figured that i should be doing this but i sort of insisted that i can't and i don't want to and it's too much and this is not what i want to do so i had no choice uh so then you know once you get into it you have no choice you have to do, make the best of it right so i put in my best effort uh to try and make this happen why because on the one hand it's for the company the other is because benefits of it are to the customer and, and that's something that i can uh, you know resonate with well with me so i decided i'll i'll go ahead and jump in there and and, and get it going um so two years later now looking back for me it's like i have grown the most i've enjoyed it the most uh and it's been wonderful very challenging uh but it's been really fantastic Uh, so much so that you know i had like a target sort of thing that i set myself to achieve and we've got there um, and so we're going mainstream it's like one of the biggest programs that we have going at dialog now um, and you know i passed that part on to one of my colleagues to handle so we've actually appointed the chief digital officer now uh, who can take that on and you know do it full time as another portfolio because otherwise it's two jobs uh, in one and it's a bit hard mm. uh, and and this just been fantastic and I, i mean obviously i'm, I'm still involved uh, uh, you know in the digital customer experience side of things 
but when it comes to companies there's also a whole digital care for business and uh, back officers and you know so much of uh, other activity going on so we've got uh, all of that going now and it's a huge program and i think we've made great great progress and you know i, I feel good that that my part uh, but now i'm on to some you know on to something else and that's something that i enjoy doing different things all the time uh, otherwise i think it's impossible to be in the same career so i've been doing the customer piece for 30 years now 30 years yes but i've always dialogue 20 odd years in dialogue 20 and also but i've always had the flexibility almost throughout all of these years uh, to be doing what i want to do with it and and that's the good thing so i try to give my my those who work with me the same opportunity let them do something and fly with it if you, if you make mistakes if you go wrong it doesn't matter right and then it's amazing what people can come up with and what you can do i've done that i'm sure Kastur has been allowed the same opportunity like she said if you let them then sky is the limit and you'll be surprised with what people can do if you can just help them when they need the help and that's and I the guess, thing uh, have watched their back have their back if things go wrong yeah. because you need yeah. yeah so that's a big piece i'm like the big defense mechanism so they all know that they can come to me and I will be out there with my guns and yeah, so yeah, that and so and 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 you don't yeah that I have, I have gone through it, so I know so like you know you have taken out that blame culture yeah, into yeah. more you're accountable and being responsible yes. for their this so that's great because they say women are not supportive but you all have changed that and you are the uh, digital piece don't you do it for the entire group uh, yeah well there's involvement from because there's a representative from one uh, across our course in, in each of the countries. So yeah, for the last two years, I was the representative oh, okay. in that piece as well. Um, yeah. Okay. You can see I'm her biggest fan. <laughs> I, I can see that because normally I admire with your sari and I, I, I admire with her dresses. So I always look at her dresses. There's something new you bring it out. So you. I always follow you and see your dresses. <laughs> okay, coming back now. You know, Sri Lanka is very famous for women forums and stuff, and I'm also, I think I'm also responsible for it. Because a few years ago, I started this women in management and bringing personalities. But now in Sri Lanka, it's a trend. Like, you know, you have so much of forums and conferences. But for some reason, recently, I think I spoke with you also, Kasturi. I was sitting for international forum, and I felt, and I felt I'm also responsible for it. Some of the people whom I know knew, and people who has been awarded by Vim also, I felt they don't know how to still to pitch for international market and international audience because we are still being a localized audience. And since you both are sitting for international conferences and forums, I just want to know, is Sri Lankan women ready for international women forums and conferences? Are, are we ready for that? I think... Um, and I'll say it in a different way. I think Sri Lankan women have a story to tell for the region because we, uh, we are one country. I studied this vis a vis India purely because to see why, whenever I go and sit with the Indian CEOs or Indian heads, uh, they find it that uh, they find it a tougher journey to come up because they, they go head to head. Yeah. And the companies take pride in saying they have, they don't have discrimination. Whereas I think in Sri Lanka we say there is discrimination. We, we have policy which are women friendly purely because our talent, the best talent sometimes are women. And as corporates we want the best productivity and the talent to retain. Yeah, it's about talent. More so over we kind of have to be flexible to women because it's unequal at home. The day they had equality at home where the men husbands culturally we don't have equality. Yeah. Because we as as a, I also when I got married I thought my job was to look after the kids, which I won't do it. I will do it all the time. I won't do it any other way. Uh, but you're thinking if you don't cook you're like not a complete woman. Yeah. I still don't cook. Yeah. But th those are the things you have cultural pressures. You have to be there to take wash the kid, you have to prepare the meal for your husband. Look after them, we take all this. So the day the the future generation of men and women are ready to have an equal footing at home, then the corporates can actually do that. But Sri Lanka has a story because we as corporates actually lend a crush. We tell them to flex it time. You can do this, you can work from home. We bend rules to make them stay in the workforce. 
So we have a story. How we should be priding our story and we should how we sell ourselves has to change. That I is think what we I sell want. ourselves short that way. We profile ourselves like uh, a bit lesser than what we should and we have the capability to do that. So That's what I was asking because I think we have a unique stories compared to other countries. But we are not, as you said, we are not that kind of like, we don't boast about us. That's I think true. Sri Lankans have that problem. Yeah, it's, it is, it's we, with we, men we also. We under-market ourselves. Women especially. Yeah, yeah we, we probably think it's boasting or it's inappropriate. Yeah. But we sell ourselves short for sure. Um, for, for me, it's been that I just think, you know, if you're confident in yourself and if you know your, what you're going to speak on and you have that confidence, uh, then just being authentic, you know, as Kasturi said, and being your true self and just being at ease and, you know, doing your piece. Uh, I think that's what it is. If you sort of prepare for something and stage it all, yeah, then you're right. just going to come back so wrong. And people can sense it. People can always sense it. Actually, the point is so on right is that I think we generally, majority, we have to be comfortable with ourselves. And we try to try to actually tell things what people think the ideal story yeah. should be. I was telling you right just before we started yes. this interview. Yes. That's the same because thing. I told yeah. because from corporate world for the first episode for the corporate world I have invited both of you all apart from the other. So she asked me why because I said I want people to be honest, people to be genuine because I don't want. It's not that because I think it's mostly uh, women scared of you know what it will be going to impact how it's going to impact after the program, how people will think about me because we always. Want approvals, validation, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. like validation and approval, I guess, right? Society. But I think what it is is when you're confident in yourself and you're happy in your own skin, you don't need that approval and validation from anyone. And if you need it, you have yourself to give it, and you have your closest friends, family to give it to you. Exactly. Yeah. Who? What does it matter? What everybody else thinks, right? You are who your attitude you are. and you this are thing will come to the young No, you have your more moments. I mean, there are moments I would call and say, Sans, this is happening. You don't think I can do it. And she said, what nonsense, you can do it. You can go with it. You need that. But you, you can tell your most innermost thoughts and worries you have on that. And then you get an independent view and kind of understand. So nobody is super yeah. human being. You For need sure. to lean on other yeah. people. Whichever, your husband, wife, right? uh, friends, friends, family, children. children. Whichever you want. Whoever that works for you at that moment, in, and, and that's a thing. Like at different times, there are different people who will, you know, whom you probably get that support and encouragement from. And I'm sure in the workplace, at some point in time, your bosses would have, uh, you know, in a big way, because we both worked for a long period of time, right? Because you must have worked for some twenty something also, or eighteen, eighteen, right? And I'm probably twenty one. I just can't stop counting after twenty. So I'm just saying, it's home, right? And you know. People also grow to, in the workplace as well, people who know you well enough grow to, to know you for who you are, right? And uh, So we have to actually, as a nation, we have to come up and do our, bring our own brand, uh -huh, market definitely. ourselves, right? Yeah, definitely. And we have a story. We, can we have a story. We have a lot of stories. So coming back to your, because both of you, as I introduced my introduction, one of the beautiful ladies, one of the elegant ladies, <laughs> right? And also you are coming from a background of a school background and you all are from Colombo and you all are beautiful, as I said, beautiful and elegant two ladies. Is it the reason you got into the top? Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not the case. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't consider myself beautiful at all. And uh, I, uh, I don't think, I think it was a lot of hard work and a lot of uh, perform. We had to uh, deliver results. Uh, show success, but I think what really got us is the passion to do excellence. Whatever you do, if you if you get Sandra to do somebody's surprise birthday, <laughs> so she's good in that. I swear she did. I remember the because menu she called was, me. The menu was tailor made, excellence, perfection. Uh, the same thing. I mean, you, you have to have that passion for whatever you do. Not only the job, but if you're answering the phone, I tell my team, any job should be too big or too small. Yeah. But yeah. executing passion. So I think that 
if you do right today and do excellence today, tomorrow will be different. It will be a better tomorrow and that slow, taking it slowly and not wanting this race to go at, at a bold speed versus uh, at our speed. I think and happy in the journey, you, do, you, you would achieve what you have to achieve. It's true. Um, I don't know, because of the fact that we are both from the same school and we have a lot of friends who have, have, are excelling and have excelled. Um, a lot of confident women in themselves and all that. I don't know, maybe school had something to do with it, right? Maybe they did build us good yeah. care, capabilities, disciplines, taught us something, even that it was a convent and there was a bell ringing and we had, you know, discipline. Maybe that had something to do with our very early beginnings, right? And it somehow stayed with us. But I think, yes, uh, com the common thing is that we are consistent, we are persistent, and we can stay there and get it done. We won't give up, right? Uh, we can get it done and we want to be credible. Uh, we take pride in that, I, I think, think right? Sense of pride in Sense what of we pride. Deliver. And it's to know that you can count praise. on us. Not to get praised, yeah. but just a sense of pride that you did yeah. that, right? Yeah. So, to, and, and just to be able to know that someone can count on us, right? Give them a job, doesn't matter what, yeah, you'll get it done, leave it with them. And if you keep doing that, over and over and over and over again, then you build that credibility. People build that trust in you. And with that, people trust you more so you can be more transparent about what you're looking for. Uh, you know, in terms of trying to get something done. Because it's not always about smiling and being nice and sweet and joking. There are the tough times, right? I mean, most of the times are tough. Yeah, most yeah. times are quite tough. So, but when you've got it done together, then I know we can all celebrate together, then everybody is happy and that's what we want in the end, right? So coming back, you know, now, Kasuri, you are a single mother. So, uh, recently, you know, we, I put a topic where everyone was like asking me why you are promoting single mothers and being myself also being a single mother. I actually, uh, we both discussed and we changed the topic. but. Actually, we were not branding being single mother. It was actually what we were trying to say is just because you're a single mother, it doesn't mean that you can be successful, but there's a journey behind it, right? So do you think being a single mother, you got favoration, you got sympathy, and that is the reason for you to be successful? No, I, I, I firstly, I must say that uh, being a single mother was not a choice happen and any young girl be it any country it is that you never dream to be a single mother, right? so then you end up being that and you're responsible you try to be a mom as best as you can use whatever tools you can to provide for your kids then you have a job and if you are a person who takes passion in delivering and excelling in what you do and you get a salary from an employee when you get a salary you have to do your mother and I always think so when you do that, you actually end up being good at your job and you start performing and um, so you don't, I have never got sympathy, they have got, I've got empathy. Okay. Um, people do empathize with me when I have, to, especially at AMAS, I, I'm not that I'm branding AMAS here as a female friendly organization, but I do love my organization because I'm who I am because of them and my kids manage to grow up because of them. And if I if it so happens that the children have a meet the parents meeting or they are sick or I have to do something of theirs or my parents, I mean there is no question. It was like you do that, you, you have that job. It's not only for a woman. I think even if it's a, a guy there, you would have empathy towards uh, their personal issues at that point. Uh, but when you're a single mom, it kind of amplified and you have this tagline of being she's responsible for two kids on your own um, so I didn't have sympathy I didn't get there because of sympathy nor did I get there uh, because I was single so only thing I would say on your career uh, if you have an understanding husband who supports you fine if you don't the fact that you have control of your time and choices you make and you answer to yourself and your kids only it kind of it's a bit easier on yourself yeah. so that as a, in your conference I said that's the only plus I had control of my time I answer for myself but everything else is really not the easiest journey. Yeah. 
I will say yes to that. <laughs> then Sandra, then again, you know, married life is not easy, right? Then people say a lot of, you know, married women has a lot of relationship out of the marriage, but they have a safe place to hide their, you know, when it comes to blaming, they have a safe place to hide. But I, I don't think it's a reality, it's just a myth. So how do you say that? Because you are being married, I think, how many years now? 27, 27 I think. 27 years. Yes. Yeah. So I think, um, well, I don't think I can specifically say that one is right or the other is right. I think um, someone, whether it's a man or a woman, having a relationship outside of their marriage, maybe it's a safe place to hide, right? Maybe not. Uh, and I don't think that's common to only women. I think it's more so for men as well. Uh, that's one. On the other hand, being married, whether it's a man or woman, I think it's a tough place to be because there's so much more expectations from another partner, right? A spouse. Um, and then you have to balance and manage all that. Parents has custody set for herself. She's responsible for herself. She doesn't have to answer to anyone. Right? Yeah. And she doesn't have to put up with anyone else's expectations and not meet them and then there will be unpleasantness and so on, right? So that's a part I would say uh, pretty earlier on in my own marriage. Um, my husband's family, they were not used to having people work. All the wives gave up work and they stayed home. Um, and that would have been the ideal. So it was a really tough time for me in the first, I think, five years of my marriage. Um, I just wanted to quit because I just couldn't cope with the whole family, right? My husband has four other siblings, with the whole family of people who are staying home and this and that, and I go to work, I get late, I have to work on Saturdays and Sundays and so on sometimes, and it was tough. But I fought it all through, and after a while, I think they settled, they knew I wasn't gonna give up. Um, and they got used to it little by little, and uh, subsequently I just found that I had a whole lot of support, because my husband also decided that this is it, She's not going to quit, right? So I was somebody who actually had my baby on the 25th Christmas day. And on the 1st of January, right? When everyone goes to do the kiribat and the oil, lighting of the oil lamp, um, I actually went to work. And, and back then you didn't have these uh, disappearing whatever stitches. So I had a C-section and I had to go subsequently uh, to get that, uh, you know, uh, attended to. But with my plaster and everything, I still went to work. Uh, five days later because I'm that way and then I don't think there's anyone else who had like three to four month maternity leave paid leave but didn't stay at home and decided to go to work nobody right I did within one month so one month after I had my baby my husband said you're going to drive everybody crazy and this child and me and everyone crazy why don't you go back to work because yeah, he said because my, my, my I always told you my mother-in-law was like yeah. the biggest support on her. She's brought up five children and probably another seven or eight you know, grandchildren. So she was best to handle it. She was being supportive. Um, and I thought this is a good thing. Now I can do what I want to do and what I like to do. I can let her manage what she likes because she's a lady of the house. She's good at it. She's got the expertise. Let her take care of those things. And we are both happy now. If I try to go and step inside her place and say, you know, this is my house, I'm planning the menu and she thinks this is her house and she's planning the menu and she wants to boss her down and I want to boss her down, that would have been a huge problem. So I found my space with her and we got along so well and, and all the day until, you know, uh, she passed and that, that was like when my daughter was beyond 21, I think my daughter was about 21 then. So literally she brought up uh, my daughter, kept house and all that. And uh, so I think that was like a, that's the way I found my balance in the marriage. Uh, and my husband's got so used to it. He's a very, very supportive person when it comes to, um, you know, my career, obviously, because it's now like been 26, 27 years. But the first five at least was like the toughest ever, toughest ever. Yeah, because, you know, what happened is a lot of people think that it's easy when you're on top, right? to remain top and, and also to ensure that your brand also there is not easy. And especially when you are married, as you said, you are answerable to a lot of people. But it takes time uh, for a person to understand that this is for both of them and for their family. And you, Kasturi, coming to work, you said you are answerable for you and your kids. 
But there's a time come, you know, that because I know it keeps grows on and my then. Gosh, don't I know that now? Now, yeah. then you feel that, like, you know, the freedom we have talked about and not being answered. Sometimes you feel if someone call, can call and ask me whether I'm home, whether I had dinner, you know, there are feelings coming, right? So it's, you know, everyone has something, whether you're married or whether you're not married or whether you're single, whether you're single parent. But only when a person in that position understands. Exactly. I think nobody has it all. I mean, you are just, and we all have your wistful thinking at certain points in your time, or on, in a day at least. And now, my, as you said, my kids are overseas, and now I actually redefine myself as a career woman because they are really hard, right? And uh, yeah, so I guess there are moments you can't, and you, the secret is be happy internally with what the blessings you've got. I, I have, I'm a very spiritual person, I think we've all got blessings and be happy and grateful for all what you've got and how you can impact others and if that's the case, you have one void or something like that, look, everybody has issues, so this is my life. And yeah, so after your job now, you have to end up with your husband full time, right, one day, you know, we say that our good times, mostly our good times are spent in offices than being with the man we love or with the children. But when we have the time, they all are being gone away. So now, this time is coming very close that you have to spend more time with your family. How do you feel like? Okay, so just before that I have to tell you about this one comment you made about, you know, okay, is there someone going to say, have I eaten yeah. you know, whatever, right? So that's the flip side of that very question yesterday. I was at work. My husband actually called me and put a shout and said, Aren't you coming home for lunch? I'm waiting at 2 30 and all that, right? <laughs> so that's another way of do saying, Are you eating? And I was so upset. I said, Right, right, man, I'll come. And then I have to tell someone I was working on it. Oh, I have to go home and never mind, let's finish now and run <laughs> because my husband's waiting to eat. So that that actually, you know, so there's the other side to it. You may say, Oh, I miss someone saying, Are you coming? <laughs> For me, it was like, Oh gosh, you know, <laughs> now I have to stop and go and eat, right? Do you know, we don't appreciate yeah. but we That's have also. The, yeah, so it's, it's the yeah, side both sides. Two sides, yeah, right? Two sides. It depends yes. how you look at appreciating yeah. it. Yeah. And, you know, getting on to this question about uh, uh, probably retirement time and how I'd spend more time. So, uh, for me, I have one daughter. She's already away. She's already been uh, out of the house for like, I think now, seven years or something. Uh, so, when I talk about family, because my, my mother in law and father in law have passed, I just have my mom, my dad's passed. Uh, for me, family is, is literally me and my husband at home now and um, he has a routine that I am comfortable with um, and I have a routine that he has to accept with he likes it or not <laughs> that he's comfortable with which is like I'm always, you know, I'm just always about yeah. just the way I live it, right? Most often working also uh, and he has to make a lot of compromises because I'm like with the light switched on at 12 and in the morning also right because it just depends if I'm feeling like sleeping I'll sleep if not I won't I'll work or do something right so um, I think when I think about my retirement or when I'm you know when I have to spend more time uh, the thought might drive him crazy because he always says to me like you have to work right okay? um, and I don't think even my daughter knows and everybody basically who's around me knows. My daughter actually tells me, oh, so what does it matter to you? You enjoy work, no? you love work, no? you do it, you know, you want to go to work even when it's a holiday, right? It's not that, it's just about finding something where you have your passion and to make you feel useful. Yeah. And as long as you're getting value out of it. So even if I may not be, let's say, a career woman of that sort, for sure, the only way I'd like to be, you know, getting away from this world is by being super busy. I always tell everyone, and especially my daughter, that there's plenty of time to sleep when you're dead. <laughs> you can sleep permanently in the coffee. But while you're, you know, live and kicking, you just have to live life, right? And if it makes you happy to be working of some kind of work, any kind of work, making yourself useful, I think you need to do that, right? Yeah, you need to. So coming to the end, I just want you because I just don't want to miss this message. I want you to just, I did my, the introduction of you. 
you are given an opportunity just to introduce who you are apart from your professional career. Like, you know, who is Kasturi, who is Sandra. For one or two centers, just tell who you are. I'm just going to say this because otherwise I'll take forever. So I think who I am, what you see is what you get. Who I am is what I am. I don't have, uh, it's not sort of a totally different personality and a facade, right? Most everyone who knows me knows me for who I am. I'm fun and this and that and everything else, but work is very different. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, I'd like people to know me and remember me. Uh, and I think a lot about it now because I think you're closer to the end than further away now. Um, and I want, I think about it a lot. I think about the fact that I want to be remembered for some good, some positive influence that I've caused in anyone's life whom I've touched or come into contact with. Um, and to leave a legacy behind in terms of the good that I've done. And, and hopefully the, the rippling effect of it for people I connect with on a day-to-day -day basis and of course for my, my child, right? Uh, if, if, I've, if she's learnt any good to be a really good human being and a wonderful person, um, I don't want, I'm not looking for her to be rich and famous and whatever. I've just told her, you be happy. Being happy is the most important thing and making other people happy any which way you can, right? And to me, uh, in Connecting or being in touch has a lot to do with my spirituality as well. I mean that maybe is because of our foundation, you know, yeah. and at first you're forced to uh, <laughs> and go to church in my case, in the board in like seven days uh, a week I, I had to go at first. And then when I had the choice, I gave it up altogether. <laughs> and I even thought of converting into some other religions and it's momentarily uh, boy player influence. Uh, but subsequently, um, you know, I on my own decided that that's the life I want because you're grounded and you're happy. You yeah. find that rock and that place, and that's a good one. Um, similar in terms of um, Kasuri's, like what you see is what you get genuine. Um, I'm, even though I can be tough, I think I'm a very soft person inside. And um, I surround myself with people who are very kind hearted people who, who love to help people. I have one thing different is to Sandra is if I feel people have fundamentally, everybody has pluses and minus, but the day I think somebody is fundamentally evil, I run away. I just keep up, I would just say hi and bye. And I don't, and she says no, but it's okay. I, I just say no, I, I cannot have them within my ecosystem. So I believe in surrounding myself with good people. I um, and genuinely I go out of my way to do things to people who are really good and who I care for. And basically, if I can influence anybody and I can help anybody, impact anybody in my life positively one day at a time, that could be something I'll be happy about. And can I say this yeah. about Kasari? Maybe we should say this about ourselves that nobody else knows. We can get very emotional and sentimental that we can actually cry. I, I know. like that. For well, every second, I have seen Kasturi. Oh, you have seen? Yeah. You haven't seen me do no, that. Right? I have not I seen you, but she I have seen her. I was and sometimes I wonder how she makes this yeah. year because, I you know, know, as you said, the people have, a uh, lot of Sri Lankan people have perceptions, a lot of perceptions. So sometimes uh, you have to change the person and I know. Uh, yeah, I have not yet seen, no, but her I have seen. She My... sees me sad or you see somebody else is sad, but listen to the story, she has cried for them. Two days ago, we actually had our awards night, and I had tears pouring everywhere. And I was so embarrassed. I, I was like busy wiping. Uh, I had tears when my chairman spoke, when Dr. Han spoke, when my new boss Sufud spoke, uh, when people were winning awards. You know, I, I was just, and I do this every year, and I tell myself every year what, what, what is wrong. Because I don't want to cry. No, I think it's good but... to have because we are women and we are not just women, we are leaders, we are brands, and we also yeah. have a soft side. Yeah, and it's okay, you and know. It's There's okay. nothing wrong with it. Yeah, that's but the I best you thing. You have to, one thing I learned in the corporate side, I think I'll give as a message, is I always tell if you know you're a person who's overly sensitive and uh, you feel for the other person a lot, uh, when you're taking up issues in a corporate setting, you have to do it when you're calm. You cannot let that emotion 
outweigh the words which come out. The objective you want to get the point across is lost. So I had to learn that. So yeah. Okay, we are coming to an end of one of the best, I would say, one of the best episodes. And the both said, what you see, what you get. So these are the real personalities. Before we wind up, there's a small gift from uh, Plenty with Solo, which is unique to us because uh, this is actually a show which I personally wanted to get Sri Lankan brands out of Sri Lanka. And not only featuring Sri Lankans, but also international personalities, because I think it's high time we come out from this island mindset. So the gift is ready. I'll give it to you all. Before that, if you all can sign, there's a cup next to you all, Sandra, next to you all. If you all can kindly put your signature into that cup. You said outside or the yeah, out outside. here? Yes, outside. yes. Yeah, just leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kasturi. Thank you, Sandra. And let me give you all the gift. So I'll just leave it here. So these are the two gifts from thank you very much. Plenty with Sulo. Thank you. And I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks. Okay.